I'm Carl Eugene Leffler, and my principal research is telecommunications and virtual reality. I design virtual worlds that are networked and shared by more than one person at the same time. My work is supported by the Studio for Creative Inquiry, Carnegie Mellon University, where I coordinate a research team of scientists, artists, and students. But before discussing my work in greater detail, let's begin to define virtual reality. By fundamental definition, virtual reality is an interactive, three-dimensional, computer-simulated world that is updated or created in real time. Applications can be fully immersive or desktop variety, as in computer games. To interact with an immersive world, a user needs special equipment, a head-mounted display, and a navigation device. The head-mounted display and navigation devices use electronic sensor drivers that send data to the computer, which in turn creates the world in real time. The sensors mark the position of the user in the world, including their point of view and direction of travel. For example, when the user turns their head, the viewpoint changes. In addition to designing virtual immersive worlds, I'm interested in how multiple participants can be networked or conjoined to share the same world. And sometimes this network can take place over very, very long distance. The first technical demonstration of network virtual reality took place between Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh and Munich, Germany, a point-to-point -point link. In this demonstration, users at each site put on a head-mounted display and shared the same world with one another. Each user had an independent point of view and could manipulate objects. What good is network virtual reality? Imagine the benefit to long distance education. Imagine a networked immersion environment which was about ancient Egypt. Here, an educator could lead a guided field tour or individuals could conduct independent study and all without the necessity of actually traveling to Egypt. There remains a broad range of other disciplines that can benefit from network virtual reality. Consider architecture, medicine, and other forms of scientific visualization. What kinds of worlds are we currently building? The first world constructed was a container or museum to hold the other forthcoming worlds. And this museum, like most museums, is comprised of galleries. The difference is this distributed art museum can come to you and the galleries feature virtual worlds. When entering the museum, one is greeted by an agent, a synthetic person with an artificial intelligence. Walking through the virtual museum, one can see galleries with exhibits. One of the first gallery exhibitions created for the museum was the Fun House. Here, we are in front of a mirror, which reveals your computer persona. Users can see other users in network virtual reality, so your computer image is very important. Now, we are turning left and suddenly encounter another person in the world. We wave in recognition. Imagine inhabiting a virtual world with a multitude of other users, each with their own agenda. Unique to this project is the exploration of physics in virtual reality. And here, the attributes of gravity, velocity, and friction are assigned to a dynamic object, in this case, a ball. Moving objects add interactivity to a virtual world, and to ride or attach oneself to a moving object is essential. Here, we are being watched by another user as we extend our hand to catch a ride on a merry-go-round. In another Funhouse example, the user touches the floor of the UFO room and is whisked away on a flying saucer parked next to the museum. Once on the craft, it becomes very interactive and the user can fly it around. The most recent addition to the Virtual Art Museum is a new work based on Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine. And here one can pilot the craft over a conceptual terrain. 
Other areas of investigation include the automobile industry. A number of worlds were designed for the Ford Motor Company, including a virtual showroom and test driving track. The track features a California ocean highway and mountain scenes. Remember that this is network virtual reality, so one can take friends with them on a test drive. The Ford worlds are representational of industrial projects. And recently, a consortium has been formed with partners in Japan, the United States, and Scandinavia to investigate network virtual reality for education, teleconferencing, and industrial design. The consortium is also investigating network virtual reality for entertainment and consumer home shopping. And to this end, an entire virtual city is under construction. This city, like any city, will be comprised of private dwellings, parks, stores, and of course, inhabited by scores of users, each with their own purpose. Finally, we are designing a number of educational applications to be presented in science museums and in schools. They can be networked with more than one site and shared by many participants. In the music room, one can perform with friends. One of the instruments is a pentatonic type of keyboard with three voices, a full orchestra, a choir, and percussion instruments. This networked environment is friendly and intuitive and designed for people of all ages. My work then is about designing network virtual worlds that can be inhabited by more than one person at the same time. But importantly, within these worlds, one can do things such as play music, go shopping, or go to ancient Egypt, or participate in a dynamic teleconferencing session or group design processes. Virtual reality has captured our imagination and networks will render it accessible.